All right, so check this out. The Dallas Cowboys executives said that they don't agree with Coach Prime. There is no conspiracy that HBCU players are not getting drafted, right? They said that's not it. We, we like to find talent from everywhere. This is what they're saying. But check this out. This is what they said. I'm paraphrasing. I don't have the article in front of me. They're looking, but the HBC, HBCU players must have draftable numbers. Draft, draftable um, numbers or something like that. What do, what do they mean by that? You got to have draftable numbers or matrix uh, or whatever it, it was. So there it is right there. They told on themselves. Like first they said that you could get talent from anywhere. That's true. I mean, Jerry Rice, um, Walter Payton, Air McNair, they all came from HBCU and, and a host of others. I believe Doug Williams, right? He went on the, um, he played for the Redskins, won that Super Bowl, then he went on to coach Grambling. Um, you got to have draftable numbers. Like, you mean to tell me out of the HBCU, they don't have any play uh, linebackers that can match up with the power five linebackers. Listen, this is what it is. <clears throat> the Cowboys and all of them, they can say what they want. They're going to prefer the power five over the HBCU. That's just how it is. I don't know why people don't want to be honest. That's just what it is. And there's many factors that go into it. I mean, you could, you could uh, say that Many HBCU colleges, they don't have the resources like these power fives, like an Alabama or a Georgia or these other um, big colleges. Man, even Rutgers campus, I'm from New Jersey, even Rutgers campus look good now. They um did a lot with their, you know, they did a lot with their locker room and stuff. It looks modern and everything. Rutgers. And um, <clears throat> that's what it is, is resources, you know. Sports medicine, they got like Alabama. You, you ever see how their facilities look? I mean, they have everything there. The, the, I mean, if I played football at Alabama, I wouldn't even go around the city for what? You know, I, I have everything there, everything I need. What I got to go out to eat for? Well, I guess if you got a date or something, you got to go out. But here's the thing. I'm I'm going to be working on my craft in the, in the uh, film room and working out in them facilities. I wouldn't even have time to socialize, really, you know. But um, they, they have everything there that the players need. And some of these HBCUs, I've seen the campuses, and um, it's not on par. The resources is not on par to the Power Five. That's just what it is. And the Power Five is always going to get the top-notch players. You know, that's I mean, when Dion was at Jackson State, I mean, he did get Travis Hunter. And a few others that um, turned out to be really well. He was able to attract them um, from other colleges to come there and um, be successful. Um, he, he, maybe Eddie George, maybe, you know, maybe he can attract some of the, the top talent as well. I could see him doing that. You know, he played in the NFL. He's a Heisman Trophy winner. You know, he could attract people. I'm talking about Eddie George at Ohio State, went on to play um in the nfl running back heisman trophy he's the coaching in the um, hbcu i could see him bringing quality over you know if people want to play for eddie george right dion had that certain type of uh magnetism to attract some of the talent to him and um and they had limited resources and they did upgrade their facilities and stuff but i'm just saying that's what it is and people need to be honest you know if you have um a kid that got top 10 talent coming out of high school sure he would like to go to hbcu but what what's going to put him in the best position possible to win going to the the school that got the good resources you know it's nothing wrong with hbcus you know um the experience you know the bands and all that stuff but the NFL, time and time again, they overlook these people. So why, if you're a top 10 talent, put yourself in that position? You might as well go to where, where you know, where they think the competition is. Like like I said, you got a lot of 
good people in the uh, HBCU that that are really good. You got a lot that are that are really good in the HBCU. I'm following the HBCU more than, more so than I did in the recent years. And um, I have to be honest with you, like I haven't really been following them like that until like Coach Prime went to Jackson State. I'm be honest with you. I used to follow them back when I was in college. You know, I went to a few games and stuff like that. We got a few HBCUs out here where I'm at, <clears throat> but um, it comes down to resources and money. That's what it comes down to. It, how the, these schools got big endowments that they can um, funnel back into the program. They got better TV deals, stuff like that. It makes it hard. They can, they can offer now that we have the NIL. They can offer a player a hundred thousand dollars to stay there if he's really good. We we get you a hundred thousand dollars. What do you think the kid gonna do? If he go to Jackson State. Hey, Nick Saban, they offer me a hundred thousand. What can y'all do? <laughs> we can we can just promise you, you know, to play here. <laughs> That's what we can promise you. Where do you think the kid's gonna go? Unless he just got truly love for, he want to play for a certain coach. That's what Dion had brought to the table. But um, there is, there is no conspiracy. I agree with the Cowboys in closing. There's no conspiracy, but I just know what it is. You know, you guys favor the SEC and all these other schools first. I mean, conferences first. And then if somebody is exceptionally good, or if you have a coach that I can eyeball talent, like Bill Belichick. <clears throat> now, Bill Belichick, he goes everywhere to look for talent. He don't care where you are. Just like he he drafted a guy to Jackson State. He saw something in him. He saw something. Because, you know, if you just uh, look at his history, he drafted Tom Brady in the, in, the last, in the last round. And look what happened. So he saw something in that kid. So shout out to him. But the rest of them, you know, they got offers to um, join the team for training camp. So that's when they ball out, you know, in hopes of making um, the team. Or I heard the practice squad people make good money. Shit, can, can I sign on the practice squad right now? I could sign the prop. I could be a punter or something. Y'all ain't going to kick me in the ass. Y'all not going to do that. Y'all not going to tackle me. Next thing you know, I'm sitting up in the hospital. I, I'll be a punter. Or, you know, uh, the practice team punter. You know, that way I don't have to get in the game and embarrass myself. Players have gotten a lot faster and bigger, man, since I've been playing. I mean, they were big then, too, but it's crazy, man. Anyway, there's no conspiracy. I agree with the Cowboys, but however, you guys, I, I know the reason why you guys favor the SEC. I know the reason. You know, you know those players are going to be developed. Obviously, the cream of the crop. High school players go there and they get developed. And I, I, I get it. But I'm also in agreement with Coach Prime as well. Damn, that's the man. That's the best y'all could do. Just draft one at a whole conference. But somebody else made a good point too. Um, there's a, a lot of other Power Five schools only got one or two drafted. You know, so they said the COVID year has something to do with it as well. A lot of people had extra years in school and that overlap. I don't know. But anyway, guys, I catch you on the next one. Um, like, comment, share, subscribe. I will catch you on the next car vlog. All right, y'all. Peace.